today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the patch workspace in Fusion 360 to slice up your models for multi-color and multi-material 3D printing. Let's get started. Welcome back to Makey's Muse, guys. So what I have here is Joel Telling's own 3D printing nerd maker coin. And you might have seen this in some of his videos in dual color or two material 3D printing of dual extruders of various machines such as the Ultimaker 3 or the BCN Sigma. And I want to show you in this video how to create your own multi-color prints for 3D printing. Now I don't have a multi-color 3D printer, surprising I know. So in this video I'm going to show you my workflow for using the patch workspace in Fusion to create these. And then I'm going to show you Joel's video at the end and link you to that just so he can show you how to 3D print them. Anyway, so what I have here is a coin, a maker coin. And you will notice that there's different colors. And the whole purpose of this video is to show you how to seamlessly create cuts between multiple bodies in Fusion to assign them to different STLs. So you might take them to your slicer and then give them different colors. So you're not kind of mashing together different bodies that are drawn separately. You're starting with a single body and then slicing it up. And I'm going to show you how to do that using the patch workspace. So let's get rid of this one. Don't save. And let's start with a blank template. Okay, so this is just a simple revolve. All we've got is a single sketch revolving out our maker coin shape. And the purpose of this exercise is to take some text and create a cut through using the patch workspace that then we can export as separate STLs to assign different colors in your slicer. So to do that, I'm going to go to the bottom of our maker coin here and create create sketch. We'll click create sketch. And I'm going to create some text. So let's go to the text icon and just drop it wherever. And let's just call it whatever you like. Let's call it YouTube. Let's make a YouTube maker coin. So I'm going to assign it a different size. Let's make it 20. Uh, let's move it into position. I can make it a little bigger actually. Let's make it 35. Might be a bit too big. How's that? A bit too big. 30. <laughs> 30 and let's make it bold. Okay. So let's stick that right there. Sweet. So we've got some text. So you might be familiar with modeling in Fusion 360 using the model workflow or model workspace where you might then take this text and then extrude it. You might do an extrude cut or an add or make a new body entirely. But what we're going to do is we're going to now stop our sketch and change in the top left to patch. So the patch workspace is a completely different way of 3D modeling. Now patches have no thickness. You might be familiar with this sort of technique from other software like SolidWorks. It's called a surface. It's called surface modeling and you're modeling with zero thickness surfaces to then create 3D parts. And it's, it's like the next tier of 3D modeling. It can be really difficult to do and you can do some really cool uh, complex modeling using it. But all we're doing with the patch workspace for this is we're creating cuts that can cut through our shape to separate out parts for multicolor. So what I'm going to do is I've got my sketch selected there like that. And I'm going to do create and extrude. And the profile I want is my text. And let's pull it through like that. So you might be thinking, what are you talking about, Angus? You're mad. That just looks like a normal extrude. Well, how about that? <laughs> so what we have here is a zero thickness surface extrude. And what that's doing is taking our lines of our text and just punching it through with no fill. This has no thickness whatsoever. And it's not going to add anything to our part as it is, but we can then use it as a tool to affect and influence our part. So I'm going to now select OK. New body is fine. So we've got our patch, our patch extrude, which intersects through our maker coin, but it's not doing anything right now. They're just sharing space and they're not affecting each other. So the next tip is to use that patch to cut the body of the maker coin. And you do that through modify and split body. 
And this is extremely powerful. Imagine this is a cookie cutter and wherever it cuts through will separate that body into multiple pieces. So body to split is our coin and splitting tool is our text. Now don't select just one face. You wanna click on the bodies uh, drop down and select a body here. Um, annoyingly, it won't let you select more than one at a time, but that's okay. We'll just select this one for now. So the T and okay. And what that's done already is if I hide this body, that's the main one. And you can see inside the T it's separated. So bring that back and we'll do another one. So modify and split body. And this time we want to select the Y. Sorry, we want to select the maker coin and then the Y as our cutting tool. Again, imagine it's a cookie cutter, just going through the, through the part. And then, okay. And we can now hide our cut cutting bodies. And you can see what that's done for us is it's cut through those letters like that. So we can assign a different different look to them. Let's go, uh, let's right click it and go to appearance. And let's make just for visual visual uh, different differentiation. Let's go to plastic. Um, and let's just make the text white. There we go. White and white. And there we go. So basically these objects, these bodies share the same space and they're pretty much, there's no difference or thickness between them. They're right up against each other because we use the zero thickness surface to cut them apart. But when we print them, we can assign the STLs to be different STL files that we merge together uh, and nest them together. And then you can assign them to different extruders. So let's have a bit more fun with this. What else can we do with the patch tool? Well, you can pretty much do everything you could do with a normal sketch. You can extrude a patch. You can loft a patch. You can pattern a patch. You can sweep a patch. Uh, what else? Create, extrude, revolve, sweep, loft. Uh, offset as well, offset's very powerful. If you have a complex curve, you can offset that. Um, and you can do all sorts of gap filling as well. So let's, uh, let's add some interesting edge detail to our coin. And I'm just gonna do a circle, maybe just on the corner here, just on the edge. You can use construction lines just as you can um, on normal sketches. So I'm gonna do that. You can even project, let's project that edge P. And then I'm gonna lock these two together, coincident. So we've got a little sphere there, sorry, a little circle there. I'm gonna make a vertical line, a construction line. Uh, and let's just pattern that around. Let's try that. So let's go to sketch and a circular pattern, objects, that one, center point, this one, and that's pattern, how many do we want? Let's go with 12, that looks good, okay. So as you would have seen before, every time you do a split body, it needs to be done separately if they're disconnected. So to save myself time and not having to do 12 uh, split bodies, I'm gonna draw a, a circle out to the edge of our part like that. And now I've done that, I'm gonna trim my excess away. So let's get rid of that and that and that. Yes, I know relations have gone, that's okay, we can fix it. Give it that, don't want 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 that. All that, all that, all that, all that, all that, all that. Wow, look at that, the relations solved themselves. Patterns are always pretty buggy. <laughs> uh, so, what we've got there, I'm gonna just uh, make that one construction. So what I've done is I've made it a continuous surface instead of lots of separate separated surfaces. So if I do stop, stop sketch and create an extrude and select that surface, we've now got this. And because this is a continuous surface, continuous patch, and I say okay. And now if I go to modify and split body, body to split, main body, splitting tool, our continuous surface, okay. I can now hide that. And you can see it's split all of them off individually. Instead of me having to go back and forth doing split body 12 times or so. I just realized I did thank you instead of YouTube. Depends which, which way you're looking at the coin. It's a thank you YouTube coin for ad apocalypse that's currently happening. <laughs> anyway, so now I want to save them off as separate STLs. And I've shown that in the previous video, 
but uh, Sparky over at Sparky Phase 5 had a far superior method and easier method of saving multiple STLs off, and that's just to hide what you don't want to export. I mean, it's pretty, it sounds simple, but yeah, basically that's all you need to do. So obviously I don't want to export my uh, tools, my cutting tools, which are my, my patches, so I'm going to hide that. And let's say I just want to export the main body of the coin, so I'm going to hide everything else. Hide, 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 except that. Just want the coin. Okay, that sounds good. Right click, save as STL. So call this coin body. Alrighty. And then we can hide the coin body and just show everything else. So da, 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 Right. And now I can go to bodies, or rather, um, the main component, save as STL, and it's going to save all of those. You can see you can preview just to show what it's going to export, just what's shown. Okay, and just call it coin parts, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care. Right, so we've done that, and we can pretty much fire up uh, our slicer, but in this case, I'm going to fire up mesh mixer just to show you how they look and show you and prove to you that they, they import in the same orientation. So let's go and find them, these two. Alrighty. And you can see there they've come in in the same orientation, like so. So that's how you use the patch workspace within Fusion 360 to cut up your STL files for 3D printing on a multi-color or multi-material 3D printer. Now, as I said, I don't have a multi-color 3D printer, but my buddy Joel, the 3D printing nerd, does. So head over to his video, which I will put the link here when he uploads it to show how he gets these files and prepares them to 3D print. And if you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews on Makers Muse, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on board. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing, guys. Bye.